Hello friends, I am Dr. Sweet Tiple. I am a consultant in the Department of Oculoplasty and Ocular Oncology at Dr. Shroff Charity Eye Hospital, New Delhi. Today we will be talking about evaluation of an anophthalmic socket. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the evaluation of an anophthalmic socket with step-by-step -step evaluation of the different components of contracted socket and to provide a brief overview of the post enucleation socket syndrome. An ophthalmic socket is described as an orbit which is devoid of an eyeball which may be due to the absence of eyeball at birth, also described as congenital anophthalmia which may be unilateral or bilateral, an acquired anophthalmia which is usually secondary to surgical removal of the eyeball as indicated in intraocular tumors or severe infections like endophthalmitis or panophthalmitis. An ideal anophthalmic socket is described as one with a well-positioned eyelids with a central well-covered implant providing adequate volume replacement and well-formed furnaces allowing fitting of an adequate size customized ocular prosthesis. History forms an integral part of the examination. The nature of the insult, for example trauma which may be mechanical or chemical or infections and the age at which it occurred gives an idea about the expected condition of the socket. Radiation received early in the age following eye removal can lead to arrested bony growth. History of associated ignexal or adjacent periocular trauma like lid tear, canalicular injury, canthal injuries or vital fractures or traumatic nasolacrimal duct obstruction should also be elicited. History regarding the duration of wearing prosthesis or stock eye, which is a ready-made prosthesis, and the quality of the fit of the prosthesis also gives a clue regarding the socket status. Long-term use of heavy ill-fitting prosthesis can cause lower lid laxity and recurrent socket inflammation. Now going on to the examination. For separate evaluation, the patient should be examined first with the prosthesis in place and then without the prosthesis. Facial symmetry is looked for first. Any insult in the childhood, as in this gentleman, can lead to retarded growth of the bony orbit and adjacent soft tissue. Low set eyebrows with flattening of the facial features on the ipsilateral side with smaller palpable fissures are indicators of bony socket contracture. Facial asymmetry can also be noted in cases of trauma when there is associated or vital wall fracture. The superior sulcus is a depression seen in the upper lid below the brow area. A deep superior sulcus, also called the superior sulcus deformity, is an indirect indicator of volume deficiency. The superior sulcus deformity is graded in comparison with the other normal eye. A severe deformity is described when a deep superior sulcus is present throughout the length of the upper lid. Enough thelmos is useful in quantifying the volume deficiency. It is measured with Hertel's exophthalmometer. Enough thelmos in the presence of a normal sized implant may suggest increased orbital volume as in case of orbital fractures with a history of trauma. The position of both the upper and the lower eyelids in comparison to the other eye is important. Ptosis or drooping of the upper eyelid which may be pre-existing or due to anophthalmia should be thoroughly examined. Previous photographs before the occurrence of anophthalmia can be of great help. Presence of other eyelid abnormalities like lower lid laxity, ectropion and entropion make retention of a prosthesis difficult. Presence of interning of the eyelids secondary to posterior lamellar shortening indicates conjunctival shortening. Amount of lag of thalmos is measured with and without the prosthesis. Coming to the evaluation of the prosthesis, position and fit of the prosthesis and the movement of the prosthesis was also recorded. Condition of the prosthesis for color, surface and presence of deposits should be looked for. Once the prosthesis is removed, detailed examination of the conjunctival surface is done. Normal socket is covered by a pink, wet conjunctival surface. A dry ocular surface is seen in chronic ocular surface conditions like Steven Johnson syndrome, chemical injuries, etc. 
signs of infection or inflammation like discharge, congestion, chemosis or persistent surface edema should also be noted. Sticky mucoid discharge indicates inflammation while yellowish purulent discharge points towards infection. Granuloma formation and presence of papillary reaction in the tarsal conjunctiva indicates socket inflammation which is commonly seen with long-standing wear of ill-fitting prosthesis. The next step is the evaluation of the phonic step. Superior phonics is normally deeper than the inferior phonics. An adequate sized inferior phonics is required for retention of the prosthesis. Bulky conjunctival tissue as seen following socket reconstruction. Inferior migration of the orbital soft tissue seen in post enucleation socket syndrome and simplifron band formation following chemical injury can lead to unstable prosthesis. Next step is the volume examination. Information about implant size inserted during surgery, if available, can be very helpful. If history is suggestive of implant, socket should be palpated to note the position of the implant. In the absence of an implant, insinuating a finger Below the lower lid causes correction of the superior surface deformity due to shifting of the tissues from the inferior orbit towards the superior orbit. This indicates that volume augmentation is likely to benefit the patient, especially in the absence of tight or vital tissues. An implant should be well covered with sclera and or anterior tenons and conjunctiva depending on whether the previous surgery was evisceration or enucleation respectively. An adequate size implant, if present, should cause a maximum convexity in the center most portion of the palpable fissure as shown in this photograph. Coming to the centration of the implant. Centration of implant can be judged by an imaginary horizontal line drawn passing through the medial and the lateral canthi and another vertical line drawn from the highest point of the upper lid going to the lower lid. An imaginary circle drawn taking the intersection of these two lines as a central point denotes the ideal implant position. Any deviation from this indicates decentration, but decentration is clinically significant if the position of the implant causes a tilt of the prosthesis or prevents retention of the prosthesis. Imaging for socket evaluation is usually not required. Imaging is indicated in cases of recurrent implant migration to know the exact location of the implant. Orbital CT scan may be required in suspected cases of bony contracture and post-traumatic anophthalmia with orbital wall fractures. With this knowledge in mind, we go on to the examination of a very commonly encountered entity, the contracted socket. Contracted socket is defined as shrinkage or shortening of the orbital tissues, making fitting of a prosthesis difficult. It can have both the surface as well as the volume deficiency components. The most widely used classification for contracted socket, the Gopal Krishna classification, mainly focuses on the surface component. Five grades of contracted socket have been described. Grade 1 contracture is characterized by the shelving of the inferior fornix. The lower fornix is converted into a downward sloping shelf that pushes the lower lid down and out, thus making the prosthesis slightly unstable. This is mainly seen with the use of bulky prosthesis causing sagging of the lower lid as can be seen in the last photograph. Grade 2 contracted socket is characterized by shallowing or loss of the lower phonices. This is associated with surface contracture and makes prosthesis fitting quite challenging. When there is loss or shallowing of the upper, lower, medial and lateral phonices, it is classified as grade 3 contracture. In grade 4 contracture, along with the loss of all the phonices, there is reduction of the palpable aperture in both the horizontal and the vertical dimensions. Grade 5 contracted socket constitutes recurrence of contractions after repeated trials at reconstruction. These can range from surface contracture involving one or more phonices caused by fibrosis following failed attempts at reconstruction to severe malignant contracture with possibly no hope of reconstruction. 
Grading the contracture can give us a fair idea about the prognosis of these cases. Another important entity in the examination of anophthalmic socket is the post-inucleation socket syndrome. It is seen in long-standing cases of anophthalmic socket, usually following inucleation with absence of an orbital implant. It is characterized by severe superior sulcus deformity, enophthalmos, ptosis, and lower lid laxity causing tilting of the processes superiorly. The orbit soft tissue shift downwards toward the inferior fornix causing deepening of the superior fornix and pseudo shallowing of the inferior fornix. Each component of the post inucleation socket syndrome has to be dealt with in staged manner while planning correction. So friends, Following these simple examination steps meticulously will not only help in planning your management but will also make your results more predictable. Thank you for your patient listening.